I'm Chef Plum, and I've made my entire career off serving fantastic local food. Nothing better than showing your family local pride than using local food from farmers. Look at this. Business is booming, that's Whoa, for sure. Business is booming. Supporting local farmers and artisans is one of the most important things we can do in any state. If we don't support these guys, we're going to lose them. And not to mention, they make great products. Join me as I show you some of my favorite places right here in the Nutmeg State. Got a place that you love? Want to show off some hometown pride? Find us on social media and let us know. Edible Nutmeg on the road. There's a whole lot of science behind roasting coffee beans. I've always wanted to learn so much more about it because it's really, really, really interesting. That's why we decided to bring Edible Nutmeg on the road all the way here to Trumbull, Connecticut to Shearwater Organic Coffee Roasters. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it and <laughs> I'm not going to read any more books. Let's go learn from the master. Shearwater Organic Coffee Roasters is a small batch artisanal roaster. Shearwater roasts only 20 pounds of organic coffee beans at a time with a target profile to capture the peak of origin flavor in each and every coffee bean. The beans are then air cooled quickly to lock in the beans natural sweetness and flavor so you'll enjoy brewed coffee with wonderful aromatics that's never bitter. Guaranteed you'll be drinking Shearwater coffee within days of being roasted. Dude, this place is amazing. It's like it's like a science lab of coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun here. Uh, we're we're really enjoying. We've been in business uh, over two years now. We kind of took the winery model approach. Like if you go on a wine tour, there's a tasting room. Right. So that's my concept of what a roastery should be. It should still allow the public to come in and taste the coffees and buy beans. Uh, but it's a production facility, so we can roast what we need for all our uh, uh, wholesale accounts, which are restaurants, coffee shops and a lot of the markets like Whole Foods, Fresh Market, uh, Balducci's. What is this machine? This thing is enormous. It look, I mean, it sounds like a jet turbine taking off. It's a Diedrich steel drum roaster. The drum is turning. You can hear it and see it. There's two infrared heating elements wow. on either side of the, the drum that heat the drum and then the drum heats the beans. We're getting it up to the right te charge temperature to put our green beans in to the roaster for the roasting process. So what temperature would this need to come to to roast the beans at? Or what temperature do you Yeah, like? we... Is it different with different types of varieties? Of yeah, there? it is. And, but we generally, uh, we're roasting at about 400 degrees. Okay. Uh, but it could be as low, you know, 395 to 410, depending on moisture in the bean, density of bean. They're, they're all different from different countries. These are unroasted coffee beans, right? Yeah, those are uh, how we get them in the burlap sacks, anywhere from 130, 150 pounds. So coffee shrub or tree produces ripe red cherries. Within each cherry, there are two seeds, which are actually the beans. There's a wash process where the skin and the pulp is removed almost immediately, and then it's fermented overnight and then dried on, out on patios. And then there's the natural process where they leave the fruit on and those sort of beans uh, and then after about two weeks they crack it off and take it off and those have a lot more fruitiness to them so coffee is actually a fruit there's three phases generally in in roasting the drying phase where we're drying out the moisture in the bean the maillard phase where it starts browning from cinnamon to light brown to darker brown and then uh, our last phase the development phase we're really uh, developing the beans, uh, caramelization, and other chemical reactions further. So we really want to highlight uh, the origin flavor. So we're very careful to to come up with a bean profile roast that really uh, uses each phase in a way to get the end result. So we're trying to really create uh, a very individual bean roast for every bean. 
Beans take on a lot of heat, they're very endothermic, so if you don't have that heat at the beginning, it's very hard to make up for at Whoa. the end. Endothermic? <laughs> We're talking coffee, right? Yeah. Oh, well, think of it like popcorn, endothermic, takes on a lot of heat and, okay. then, and then pops. Well, beans do that, but they crackle at about 400 degrees. Uh, they go through what's called the first crack, where it's releasing gas and moisture out of the bean, and it's a light brown color right, at that right. point. And uh, later on, if you do a super dark roast, which we tend not to do, uh, that oily bean, that's really uh, the second crack, another exothermic release that destroys the cell wall. Honestly, this is amazing because yeah. there's a lot of science involved in this whole process. There is, and since uh, about 2000 when third wave roasting came about to micro roasters to really perfect uh, profiles for each bean and highlight origin flavor, uh, it, a lot of science has been accumulated now. And, but it's, it's food and you gotta enjoy it, so there's culinary art involved in and too. third wave roasters, way better than the first wave roasters. No one likes those guys. Yeah, well, first wave was in the 60s. That was mass commercialization. Starbucks is kind of the second wave. Okay. The third wave was in reaction to that where uh, beans are sourced better, grown better, organic, roasted better, brewed better. And now people are taking to coffee much like they took to wine. We're with a lot of different varietals. We have a lot of different origins with coffee. Wow. We offer a good variety of uh, coffees from around the world, Central South America, East Africa, and Indonesia. Picked by hand, the cherries and beans uh, on these coffee farms, all organic. And some people like a Colombian rose, some people like a Brazil, some like an Ethiopian. That's the origin of the bean. And a lot of people um, that might buy our coffee at Whole Foods, uh, we sell a lot of different origins. We also sell a lot of different blends that we create from multiple beans. People are familiar with names like Brazil, so that you'll set, tend to sell more of that just because of familiarity. Uh, in Colombia, mm -hmm. as opposed to Ethiopia, but the funny thing is, this, that's where coffee originated, and most people don't know that. In Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah. Very, it was very indigenous good. to Ethiopia, and then bean seeds were taken all around the world uh, to different continents, and so transplanted. Uh, but its native uh, indigenous origin is in uh, East Africa. Wow. So I want to show you. I think cooking with coffee is one of those really, really cool things that. You know, it was kind of cool for a little bit and then people kind of forgot about it. They stopped doing it so much. A lot of times you'll see people, you know, they'll, they'll make like a coffee rubbed steak, you know? Right, right. Well, I love pork tenderloin. So what I've got here is a pork tenderloin and we just kind of cut it up until, like, you know, it looks like like a, like a, like a beef tail, like a filet mm -hmm. mignon, but it's out of pork, right? Yep. So here's a really cool recipe you can do with this. It's incredibly easy. You gotta try this when you get home. So all we're gonna do is take some of the coffee here. Which roast is this, do you know? Uh, this is our darker Brazil roast. Awesome, the darker Brazil roast. And the flavors on here are what, a little like, Kind of nutty. Kind nutty, of chocolatey, um, you know, all our coffees have a, a, a nice sweetness to them, never bitter, and uh, that one is a really beautiful coffee. And you know, I think it's gonna be great on here because of that sweetness, that nuttiness to it. We're gonna give also a little pinch of salt, right? And now, what goes great with that here? This is cumin, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah. Look yeah. at that smell. Yeah, I love yeah. Cumin. It's yeah. great in like chili, it's great in salsa, right. it's great, and even with coffee, it's fantastic. And let me tell you why, because it has that nuttiness kind of going on with it as well. It mixes really well, so we're going to add a little cumin here, right? There we go. And I'm going to get you to take these tongs and just give it a little toss around oh, okay. inside the bowl for me. Okay. Get them nice and covered, nice and coated. Yep. All right. There How are we go. doing? Is that good? That looks fantastic. Awesome. So we're going to okay. take our pork tenderloins and we're just going to put them right on there, right? Okay. And what you want to do with these guys, you can finish them on the grill because look, at this day and age, you don't have to cook pork to completely well done anymore, right? Right. right. You know, that's a thing of the past. You know, medium is fine for me. Uh, I like to cook it that way. I think it tastes better. It retains a lot. A little more, more juice. juices. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and a lot of that flavor too. Excellent. Just gonna give it a couple slices here. Keep it nice and simple, and it does cook very, very fast. Here we go. Put this down here. All right. A little bit of salt. Mmm. That cumin, that coffee, comes through great, doesn't it? Oh, it's awesome. Nice and juicy. I love, I love it. it. Yeah. Fantastic. I want to talk about dessert. I want to make a really fun, super easy ice cream. And let me tell you something. People think of making ice cream, they think it's difficult. They think it's hard. You got to temper your egg yolks. You don't want to break the egg or scramble the egg. I'm going to show you guys and Ed how to make an amazing ice cream using espresso and no eggs. It's really cool. Check it out. We're gonna start with about 16 ounces of heavy cream. What we've got here 
is a little sweetened condensed milk, right? Some of the greatest stuff on the planet. So pour that right in there. Now, espresso. Tell me about the espresso you guys have here. Oh yeah, this is our dark golden crema espresso. Uh, it's a delicious blend of Brazil, Nicaragua, and Sumatra beans. Roasted perfectly for pulling shots of espresso. Wow, that's great. Now we're gonna give it a quick mix around, ready? You can use your a hand mixer, you can use your whisk, you can even use your KitchenAid mixer if you wanted to. There we go. I just want to get it nice and mixed up. So a couple things we can do here, Ed. You can take this just like this and mix it up really nice so it's nice right. and thick and put it right into your freezer then if you wanted to. Or get it nicely mixed up if you have a cool ice cream maker like right. what we have right here. It's a great way to do it. Really easy. All right. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> well, hey, sometimes it goes everywhere. What can you say? Let's see. Our, let's check our thickness here. You can see look how oh. thick that is on there. See? Oh, neat. Look at that. Now. We're just going to pull this right into our ice cream maker. Like I said, you can keep whipping it also with the mixer and just put it right into your freezer if you want as well. we'll turn it on. Now, we wait. Awesome locally roasted organic coffee beans right here in Trumbull, Connecticut. Make sure you check him out. Come by and say hey to Ed. He's a good dude. It's like going to science class. They're all about coffee. It's such a good time. And this ice cream, mmm. Can't think of a better way to finish up this episode. Ed, thanks for having us, man. We My pleasure. It. Come check these guys out down here in Trumbull at Shearwater Organic Coffee Roasters. We'll catch you guys down the road on Edible Nutmeg on the road. Cheers, the whole bowl. Cheers. 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 Mmm. Mmm. What's up guys, I'm Chef Plum, and on this episode of Edible Nutmeg on the Road, we're in Ridgefield, Connecticut, hanging out at the Hickories. This farm's got everything. They've got meats, they've got herbs, they've got vegetables, fruits, you name it, they've got it. An amazing farm store, you can come here and even get a nice wool blanket. This place is awesome. Come with me as we take Edible Nutmeg on the Road to the Hickories in Ridgefield, Connecticut. We grow over 160 now different varieties of fruits and vegetables. So we're certified organic with the USDA and we do fruit, vegetables, livestock, and that's pigs and sheep and chickens and goats. We also do flowers and greenhouse seedlings. Wow. So it's more, the, the more we can do, it feels like the safer the ecosystem here is. Primarily we're growing for a CSA program, mm -hmm. which means we have families who have invested in the farm and we want to make sure they're eating as much diverse of a diet as possible um, and that we're really trying to showcase the amount of different and really interesting heirloom vegetables that can come out of a Connecticut farm 12 months a year. The amount of work it takes to go into these animals, just getting them from one place to another is absolutely crazy. You should see, they have a whole crew of people out here moving these animals. I think they said it's like 30 sheep or something like that. And the funniest part is, I've never seen a cow run that fast. You don't name the animals, do you? Some of them have names. Do you? They're like, oh. We well. treat them like pets. You know, love them like a pet. Teddy tastes delicious. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's the idea. That's actually pretty central to why we do this. That's great. Yeah. Animals should be in the environment in which they were intended. And while working with us, turning yeah. compost, reclaiming land, in exchange we treat them right, and they're eating what they're happy, and then and then they yeah. feed us. And raised by people who love them sometimes means they get names. <laughs> I think raised by people who love them means you make great food. Because I always think putting love into your food is how you make it happen. I think starting with what you guys are doing with it is a great way to handle it. That's fun, huh? Bella has a name. Thanks, Bella. But we're not going to eat Bella. Now all these guys you have here, for the most part, with the exception of Bella, and, yeah. they're all these are all for food. They're tri-purpose. They're, they're food, they're pasture maintenance, and they're wool. Wow, and all this wool that this is made from here, this is all from the sheep, yeah. right? Yeah, brown, brown sheep, white sheep. That is so cool. We've worked a lot in the last 10 years, really, on trying to figure out which varieties of vegetables can make it through like the coldest New right. England winter. And some of them are coming from the root cellars, but a lot of them are coming just from in the ground, held safe by you know, the geothermal energy. Right, right. Sun. One of the popular misconceptions about New England farms is that we have such a short season. We think, well, it's great to buy local, but what do I do for the other six months of the year? Part of what we, an, an effort that we've really tried hard over the last 10 years to figure out that problem. And it's been a huge effort, but we now have green vegetables and plenty to eat. 
in the wow. middle of the winter. I mean, the nice thing for me and for Laura in the winter too is that as farmers, that's when we have the time to cook. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really our cooking season. Wow, that's <laughs> amazing. Deep winter, so we want to make sure there's enough, you know, kales and mustards and salad and arugula and all the meat and then the root crops. Wow. Um, so we have plenty. Daisy May, come here. Come here. Daisy. How long have you worked here, Daisy? Daisy, who runs the show here? You or those guys? One of my favorite things to make, especially this time of year, using pears and using a little bit of Roquefort cheese and of course pork chops from you guys. Tell us about the pork. We raise heritage breed pigs, two rounds of them every year. This last round was a Tamworth Hereford cross. So to me, that means I'm gonna have more pork chops and more bacon from the length of a Tamworth. I eat every inch of fat off these pigs because it's just sweet. Excellent. Well, so what we're doing here, we're gonna season it up a little bit and then I've got a nice grill pan here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this on the grill pan just like this, right? Easy as can be, right? I couldn't ask for a simpler way to do this. Perfect. You wanna make sure we grill both sides of it, make sure you season both sides of it. As it's grilling, I'm actually gonna take a little pinch of salt too, just pinch that in, put that on there. We've got some pears here. You wanna dump those pears in there? These are awesome, they're beautiful. And pears, I mean, to me, like the fall, you're talking, this is fall food to me. Pears, apples, things like that, right? Now, let's hit a little bit of shallot, right? Back to the pork chop here, what I wanna show you, really easy. We kept it going this way. On our grill grates, we're gonna turn it this way now to get those grill lines on there so it looks pretty. So it looks like we're a professional as we're doing, okay. right? Okay. Now, back to our bowl. We're gonna pour a little bit of this right here and put that in there just like that. A little bit of salt. Give a couple, a uh, little bit of our pepper. Can you squeeze some of that in there? All right? Really important to season your food, folks. It doesn't come seasoned. You gotta always season it. There you go. We're gonna put about a teaspoon or so of lemon juice. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then same thing on a little bit of olive oil. Just to keep it nice and mixed up. Now, can you mix it up for me? I sure can. Awesome. Pork chop, we've done both sides of it. Here we go, ready? We're gonna pop it right on our, our little plate here into our oven. About 350 for 20 minutes. Good to go. And now the most important part, while this cooks, we dance. Can you dance? That's what I'm talking about. I don't know about All right, here we go. Let's get this stuff plated up. This thing's about done after our dance party. So what I want to do to start with, got little pea shoots from here, right? I'm going to put them right on the plate, okay? There we go. These are awesome. They look great. They smell great. They taste like peas, too, which is crazy. Put a little bit of lemon juice. Not much. Just a little bit, right? Just say hey. Just say hey. They just say hi. They're not trying to get in the party too much. They just want to drop something off. That's all they're doing. And then our new friend, Olive Oil, she wants to come to the party, too. She's like, oh, you guys are having a party? Let me get in there. So she gets in there. A little nice toss like that. There we go. We're going to finish this whole guy off now. To finish this dish off, a couple things we do. We could slice this up, make it pretty, mm -hmm. right? Or, I mean, we're on a farm. It's a pork rustic. chop. It's a pork chop. Here's what we're doing. I'm going to put it on hold just like this, right? Right over top. Look at that. Nice. Beautiful. Here's your weapons. Thank you. You want to go first? Ladies first. Please Thank get you. in there. See what you think. And I like how she's going right for the fat piece, too. That's <laughs> delicious. Make sure you get some. You eat the pork. Look at that. So tender. Mm. Woohoo! I love eating our pork and our lamb here. It's like less miles on the animal. Mm. That's delicious, isn't it? Yeah. Give us one try at home, guys. Incredibly easy and get great pork from the hickories right here in Ridgefield. That's it for Edible Nutmeg on the Road. I'm Chef Plum and we'll see you guys on Down the Road. Later. Supporting local farmers and artisans is one of the most important things we can do in any state. If we don't support these guys, we're going to lose them. And not to mention, they make great products. Join me next time as we take edible nutmeg on the road. I'll see you guys down the road.